Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back.
but oof. it's a little bit different since like I don't really have a lot of people watching my YouTube, especially my YouTube streams. It's like YouTube is just like different. Get started. <sighs> no more Twitch. Twitch's ass. Twitch don't give a shit about its people. No, its viewers. That's one thing I can say for sure without fails. They don't give a fuck. Whoever the fuck plays their game, I just don't care, bro. Hey, do not. Get you, you know. But at the same time, bro, generally, bro, even now, I sometimes don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. 
one thing though, chat. We talk about whatever, bro. Like, <sighs> right now I don't have nothing to say because there's no one to speak to. But that doesn't mean someone might watch it later. such a rush to prove something or just to even become what I want when it is nothing but a slow process I do want to start a company but it's just like fuck bro I signed this company for for a lot. Yeah. A lot of different reasons. <sighs> but I need to learn how to do it. switch to I wanted to switch to whatever it is is to to YouTube because the average person doesn't have Twitch the average person doesn't have this the average person doesn't have a uh, kick or none of that you know they don't have rumble or nothing like that so I would rather comply to the average person you know <sighs> Let's say my viewers aren't the average person, but I could have viewers from all across the world and they don't have cake or they don't have this, they don't have an app store, or they don't have that. Then I'd rather have my shit so accessible that anybody and everybody could listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Be guy, girl, mom, dad, doesn't matter. Anybody could get YouTube and obviously like stream the service, stream the video, stream whatever. And YouTube, I would say, is more, more forgiving, or it's more, it's it's not easier or harder, but I would say it's a little bit more better, because once you start getting views, when you start making money, bro, I think YouTube only takes, like, some amount, obviously, because there's obviously tax you have to pay, but it is not as much as fucking, as Twitch, bro, they literally take 80% of your income, and you keep that other 20. So think about it. If you made a hundred grand in say like a stream. And you have to deal with Twitch where it's 80-20. Because that's how most of them are. It's 80-20%. They'll get 80 grand while you get that other 20 grand. Bro, that is some bullshit, bro. Straight bullshit. I'm just like, bro, what the fuck? <sighs> but like, I don't want to stream right now. Like, I genuinely don't. I don't feel like doing anything. But I have to. I got to. I mean, I could research, do another workout or something, but did I? No. Should I? Yeah. That's why I want, like, a, a PC so, like, I could sit here and talk to y'all and then also, like, we could research things or we could do things, you know what I mean? A game, you can only do so much.
in me, I'm like a maverick. Just because Andrew Tate just said it. He said, there's some men who don't break the rules. But the, that's the thing, bro. I can and I will. If it's something that I truly want, I will break the rules. Not just... I'm not talking about break the law. But I know there's one thing about rich people is they could certainly bend the law, for sure. Great fortune. That's beautiful. I love that. But when you have money, you have status, you have this, you have that... Rich people aren't invincible, but they could definitely bend the law to a certain extent. They'll definitely have different ways to make that whatever the fuck out of there. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when I'm sitting there thinking, like, bro, like, fuck, bro, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. There's rich-ass people out there that could literally sit there make a phone call or email and next thing you know they're clear to go or like like when covid was around you had people staying in homes and all this shit yet you had some rich people outside every day in f the fucking bahamas and shit where everybody's locked up in their house and all that shit so it's just like it's just the status, bro. Like, a lot of us could do that, but we just don't have the money, or we don't know the people, or it's just something we don't have yet. But that's the thing. All these people, all these rich people, they weren't born like that. Half of them were not born like that. They're not born fucking with all these people on their contact list. They weren't born famous. No, all these people made it themselves. Or if. Or if they didn't make it, they sold their self to make it. You know what I'm saying? I saw Mr. Beast clip, and he was saying something about, oh, he was at this private island with a bunch of, like, ultra-famous people and then, like, some very rich billionaires and stuff. And you could tell he was he was probably invited to, obviously, like, the Illuminati and all that shit. You know, like, in those type of meetings where all that shit went down with Jeffrey Epstein and all that. That's another thing too, bro. If you're on Twitch and you say that shit, bro, you would get banned so quickly and shit, or you would just like get demonetized. You'd get some type of copyright strike or some bullshit ass remark that you're like, oh, you're not supposed to do that. That's why I like YouTube a bit better. I can play my music, I can play whatever the fuck I want, as long as it's not copyrighted and I'm not saying like I own it, because obviously I don't own it, and all this other shit. You have more of a say, more of a freedom of speech. That's what I like. YouTube, you have more of a freedom of speech to say things or even think things. You know what I'm saying? Twitch, nah, bro. You sit there and you give more than half of your earnings to Twitch. They, they don't give a fuck about you. And if you've seen the new changes at Twitch, it is get, it is literally getting harder for probably smaller streamers to, to be able to obviously get bigger. Like, they're saying you can't have playback ads when you first start or none of that they have to be like twitch ads or i don't know it's stupid shit but it's just harder to get monetized and all that shit now and i'm just like i sit there and i think about it and i'm just like i i never wanted to be a twitch streamer i would rather be a youtuber because to the average person everybody has youtube as your girlfriend as your boyfriend they will have youtube there's all types of tutorials on youtube how to tie a tie how to change a your oil to your car, how to put on makeup, how to dress, but there's so many things on YouTube. YouTube is just like the settings on the iPhone now. It is just there all the time. So when you get a new phone, YouTube will be there. And that's why I want I switch back to YouTube because not everybody's a fucking gamer, a Twitch watcher, not everybody has kick, not everybody has rumble. All these fucking apps that are popping, not everybody just fucking has. Yeah, I might hop on, I might get like 10, 20 views, or some bullshit, because everybody's on it. But what's going to happen when everybody's off of it? Whenever people start going back to Instagram, to TikTok, and to YouTube, it, it's just not there no more. It's just not like that no more, you feel me? The only reason why Tate's on Rumble is because no other platform allowed him on their platform because of what he was saying and the influence he had but as long as i don't take it too far i will stay here you know what i'm saying 
and don't get me wrong, I ain't gonna take it too far. I ain't gonna say all this bullshit. I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say it in a different way and in a good way so I don't get my shit demonetized and I don't lose everything. Yeah, I'm not saying, oh my god, YouTube's gonna be my everything. Nah, fuck no. YouTube is just gonna be a tool for me to get my message across. It's gonna be a tool for my company. It's gonna be a tool for the things I wanna do. You feel me? It's not it's not here to fucking just limit me to this one spot, no. Don't get me wrong, I was about to stream on Twitch because I, I, don't, I don't know if I have hours in me talking right now. Like, I really don't. And, like, that's the thing, bro. A lot of us don't know, don't know this, don't know that. Yet, we still have to keep going. We still have to move. We still have to, obviously, stream. We still have to go to work. We still have to do all these different things that life makes us do or what we need to do. But at the same time, it's just like, it, do you want to do it? No, not really. But do you have to do it? Yes, you do. And that's one thing about men. There's a lot of shit that we don't want to do. We don't want to fucking take your ass out to get your damn nails done and your hair done. Hundreds of years ago, people, fucking men weren't worried about that shit. Because guess what? It was, there was no such thing. No such thing as fake plastic nails, bedazzled nails, and fucking all these wigs and all this bullshit. Maybe they had, like, some type of wig, but... They, they will, it would never be how it is right now. And that's another thing, too. Like, all these women be like... I don't know, bro. I want to say they're more stuck up in this, like, generation. They're more stuck up. They're more like, I deserve this, I deserve that. Don't get me wrong. You women deserve everything in the world, especially if you do what you need to do. But at the same time, you still have a responsibility that you have to do just like men you have a responsibility that you have to do in order to obviously deserve that you can't just fucking wake up one day and you deserve a man who's going to pay your bills a man who's going to do this a man who's going to do that and you don't do shit for him you don't cook you don't clean you don't do nothing all you do is sit there no job no nothing get your dumb dumb ass nails look pretty and that's all you do that's what a lot of girls and women do now all they do is just sit there look pretty and don't do shit for their man yet they expect Everything that comes with a man buying you food taking you out to dates taking you here taking you to a new place And it's just fucking stupid and then they expect you to sit there and have a kid with them And then guess what now you got to pay for that kid You have to protect that kid and then now she doesn't have a job because she has a kid She has to watch over the kid now you're working two times as harder for a woman who Probably doesn't even really cook here and there you know what I'm saying? And it's just retarded because I know the the men who listen to Tate or who know what they have to do in life, they will disregard all that shit and still do what is right. They'll disregard their girlfriend not cooking every day, not making sure there's a hot meal. They'll disregard their girlfriend not doing laundry or nothing. None of that. But there are people who will obviously see that and be like, you know what? If I'm putting 110% and you're not putting 50 or 110%, why do I need to waste that extra percentage on you? When you could definitely find someone who gives you the same energy, the same percentage, the same everything back. And there are still women out there like that, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of women who actually like Andrew Tate because... There's women who want a man who's going to sit there and fucking do what needs to be done no matter what. Even if, um, say, they're going down bad or some shit. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's another thing too, bro. If you're with a girl since the beginning of time and marriage or whatever, it is said that you will be there during sick times and their best times, pretty much. So that means you're worse and you're... Your worst and your best days, you're supposed to take care of each other at, with love and with will. You know what I'm saying? Like, with care. But when it comes to those days, a lot of these women will leave. They leave. They forget their main duty as a woman to sit there and care for their man when they're not doing as well or they're not... They're sick or, you know, they're not 100% anymore. They're supposed to sit there and stick by their side until they are 100% with, 
again so they can get back up on their feet. No, as soon as a woman sees you go down bad, she will leave you for stupid or a nobody. And it is, and it is the truth because fuck no, bro. Why would you sit there and put so much time, energy, money, and all these feelings into somebody and whenever they're sick, because I know when my girl was sick, I was there all the time. I was like, you good? You want this? You want that? You know what I'm saying? But that was then. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I didn't really get sick like that. So she wasn't really taking care of me like that at all. But if, if she did end up getting sick, or if I ended up getting sick, I would generally hope she would do the same for me. You feel me? Because, nah, bro, it's just stupid, bro. If you're gonna sit there, work every day, pay all the bills, buy food, do this, do that, the least you could come home to is a nice, clean home, clothes washed, food on the table, and just have a peaceful, relaxing time with you and your girl. Not just problems, 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 argument, argument, argument. It's not all about that shit. Don't get me wrong. When you're in a relationship, you will go up and down, up and down, side to side, left to right, loop de loop. You'll feel all the feelings there is, but if you or her can sit there and get through those things, if you can't do that, then you're not ready for a relationship at all. Because in a relationship, you go through everything. And it's not just, oh, it's because I don't have money, so if I would have had more money, that would have never happened. You're probably right. It probably would have never happened, but it would have happened in the same in the same like it would have been the same lesson but a different situation literally the same lesson but a different situation and it happens to millionaires billionaires broke people fucking average people middle class people like it happens to a lot of us it happens to every single one of us and it can happen to man or woman and this is not just all about men this ain't just all about women nah hell nah because if it was then I would have been saying that shit. You know, you would have known. You would know. You know what I'm saying? But it's not all about that. It's not just about one gender not doing their part. It's about both genders not doing their part. If one doesn't do their part, then they're therefore bringing down the other one. If the other one does their part and the other one is doing their part as well, then there's nothing but greatness success. Not saying there will not be hard times, bad times, arguments, and all that shit. There always will be. That's what it means to be in a relationship you know what I'm saying you have to sit there and fight sometimes because otherwise if you don't sit there and fight then what are you what are you doing like you know what I'm saying you're you're either a fighter or a lover you know what I'm saying and that's what I had heard that shit a long time ago you're either a fighter or you're a lover and people are like oh well I like to fight so I'm a fighter or I like to love I'm a lover or I don't like to fight I'm a lover that's not that's not even what it means what it means is if you're a fighter, you will fight for your love. You would fight for your relationship. You will fight for the person you want slash need. If you're a lover, as soon as something goes wrong, you will find somebody else. Or as soon as something goes this way or in that way, you will find somebody else. Because that's what it means to be a lover. You will go find someone else and love them instead. Instead of just sitting there, fighting for your relationship, fixing the problem, fixing whatever the fuck needs to be fixed, changing your ways and their ways, that's what it truly means to be a fighter and what it truly means to be in a relationship you can't sit there and be in a relationship when both of y'all are both fucking not doing shit are you serious you have two minds that are sitting there together almost 24 7 yet not one of y'all could say you know what maybe i should go do this so we could get a little bit more of that or maybe i should go get a job so we can have more money to eat or to spend or whatever or to make y'all happy. You feel me? Me, money is fake. Money is nothing to me. It's not. It really not. Don't get me wrong. When I, I'm trying to look for an electrician job, but I know I'm not going to get as paid as much as I do right now, but it's fine. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about more of the experience that I'm going to get from the electrician and obviously the job itself. Because nonetheless, I would, it would take me so much further knowledge knowledge would take you so much further than money ever will you know what i'm saying money can't buy wisdom money can't buy happiness 
and all this bullshit. I mean, don't get me wrong. Money will buy you happiness. <laughs> don't get me wrong. A lot of your problems will be solved with money. But even still, there's still rich people where money don't buy happiness. Well, maybe you're just a miserable fuck. You, you can't fix your own problems and shit. Like, sometimes it's literally just the person their self. It's not the money. It's not this. It's not that. It's about the person and their mind and their values and whatever the hell they have going on in life. You can be the top G, like fucking Andrew Tate. But guess what? You can still go through shit. Like, look at him. The top fucking G. One of the men who you would think is untouchable. What happened? Threw his ass in jail for almost three fucking months with no evidence. Threw his ass in jail. What, but what happened, bro? He stood strong. He stood tall. Him and his brother, bro. And they came out even better, even bigger, even stronger, even smarter, even more knowledgeable. Probably even a little bit more richer who knows what they're going what the fuck was going on with our in jail and their businesses who fucking knows what was going on you know what i'm saying and i'm not i'm not saying oh well, throw yourself in jail and then you'll come out better no it's not like that but with struggle comes fucking whatever bro it really depends bro it really depends how you look at struggle you either look at it as a learning experience or you look at it as a bad experience if you sit there and look at it as a bad experience every time every time you struggle that experience is going to come back from the last one and the last one and the last one and the last one and all that all them bad thoughts or that sad energy and all that bullshit ass shit will get to your mind and guess what as soon as it gets to your mind that's where you lost already because your mind controls your whole fucking body so as soon as your mind is saying i don't want to go to work i don't want to do this i don't want to do that i want to stay home and sleep guess what your body's already reacting to that your body is already feeling what your mind feels so now you now you feel like you should stay home now you feel like you should just sleep now you feel like you should do this now you feel like you should just do that you should just do whatever the fuck you feel like and what you want no fuck that no fuck that if you have the little bit sense of little bit common sense you will know what right and wrong from do or at least at least know what you were you are supposed to do you know what i'm saying even now i'm still having trouble with that don't get me wrong nobody's perfect nobody's this nobody's that but you could damn well get close enough to perfection if you just sit there and practice they say practice makes perfect and if i sit there and practice every day mentally fucking I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Now, nah, fuck that. I'm going to go no matter what. Okay, let's go. Boom. I get there. Do whatever fuck I need to do and leave. That is practice right there. That that little victory will slowly bring forth more victories, bigger victories. And that's the thing, bro. When you start small, you, ha you have to start small. You cannot start super big. Because if you start super, super big, you're going to put so much stress, so many things on your mind, and this, this, that, which might be good to some people, but start things small, start things step by step, do things the right way. Don't do it the fast, wrong way, nah, do it the fucking right way, because if you do it the fast, long, the fast, not right way, the fast, wrong way, Anything can happen and you'll lose all of that. But if you sat there and did it the right way, okay, you might lose some money. But guess what? You still have everything under control. You know what I'm saying? You just can't just hop into something thinking you know everything because it's not like that. Every day is a new lesson. Every day is a new journey. Every day is a new adventure. And you have to sit there and think, explore, adventure. You gotta sit there and take the bad with the good, the good with the bad, the yin and yang, the push and pull. You have to do that shit every single day of your life, no matter what. There's people who are weak who will kill themselves, but are they truly weak? Or they just didn't want to deal with it? You could say they're weak to a certain degree, but who knows? Everybody is different. Everybody's different. Not everybody has the same mindset. Not everybody has the same... Uh, capability not everybody has the same capacity of all these different feelings and all these different things so there will be people who sit there and kill themselves or who will sit there and blow the fuck up and argue and or sit there and just cry all day and then there will be some who sit there and take it and keep moving there will be some that sit there and disregard everything and do what needs to be done and I must become that I must be that you must be that because if you don't sit there and do what you need to do then what the fuck are you really doing 
you're not doing shit you sitting there doing what you want like that just doesn't make any sense you, make, you can do whatever the fuck you want when your family's taken care of when you have money in the bank when you have a bunch of nice cars when you have a house and you have a wife and kids and all this you can do whatever the fuck you want you the fucking man you got all this money you got all these cars you got all these women you have all these houses your family's taken care of you are the fucking man you can do whatever the fuck you want but people like me people right now who are growing up or who are young and still don't have what they want you can't do nothing but doing what you need you have to do it you cannot sit there and procrastinate you sit there and procrastinate and you're gonna fuck your life up and i'm sorry bro it, but you're generally gonna fuck up your life if you sit there and you're gonna sit there and procrastinate about every little thing you do Okay, you sit there and procrastinate about every fucking thing you do, you're gonna sit there and procrastinate about the other things in life that you have to do or that you need to do. And you can sit there and say, well, Jamal, I had a really bad day, um, blah, 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 this, this, that. I don't care, bro. To a certain extent, I do care because if you're my viewer, you're my followers, and you're my fans, okay, I care to a certain degree, but at the same time, I don't know anything about you. I don't know you personally. I don't know your problems. I don't know your family. I don't know how you were raised. I don't know none of that shit. So at the same time, how am I supposed to give you this this answer or this solution to something I have no idea about? All these scientists and shit, they don't just find these new things off of just a whim. No, they take what they experience, what they know, and what they seen, they throw it all together into one, they make a hypothesis, and then they try many different things to find out, okay, maybe this way it would work. Okay, it didn't work that way. So let's try it this way. Let's mix this with that. Let's see if that will do anything differently. So you gotta realize, it, it, it's just, life is just like that too. You gotta sit there and mix different feelings, different attributes to sit there and do something or sit there and make something of yourself. You can't sit there and mix happiness and sadness and expect fucking something, like something great to come out of it. That's fucking stupid. If you sit there throwing happiness and dedication to something, maybe something will fucking happen. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what the fuck you output and what you input. Feel me? Because everything you output, you, you will take back in return. You feel me? That's why they say, that's why there is karma. That's why you do good karma so it can outweigh the bad karma. Or if you have a lot of bad karma, do a lot of good karma so it could balance each other out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, yeah, be selfish. I'm not saying, like, do a bunch of good stuff and then do one bad thing. No, don't do that. Because that one bad thing might just weigh all those other things that you did before and now it's gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, don't do that shit. You just don't do that shit. Because you don't know, you might just do it to the wrong person, or it might just come back a couple years later and bite you in your ass when it's unexpected. You know what I'm saying? Like, or maybe you just argued with the wrong person who, in a couple years, might be the one of the business, one of the biggest businesses there is. You don't know who the fuck you're talking to. You don't know who the fuck you're gonna fuck around with like you don't know none of that shit you don't so that's why you have to sit there and treat everybody with respect with obviously all the good qualities you know you want to look them in the eye you want to shake their hand firmly you want to be respectful you know what i'm saying be honorable be truthful you know what i'm saying and be a man of your word you know what i'm saying because those qualities will take you so much farther than a lot of people's dreams or whatever the fuck they will. I'm telling you. And I, I'm telling you from experience because if you don't go up in there thinking, or not thinking, but at least being your best, looking your best, talking your best or anything, more than half the time, them people are not going to give a fuck about you. More than half the time, them people are going to forget you so fucking quick, like if you was never even there. So that's why they say the first impression is you have to make the first impression the best impression. You know what I'm saying? The first impression always matters. You have to make a such a first impression and such an impact that people want you there. People want to see you. People want to talk to you. People want to be your friend. People just want to be around you because of that profound impact you had made on them or uh, on the people around them when you first came around or whenever you first started doing different things differently, you know what I'm saying? And 
you could sit there and say, fucking, oh, well, Jeremiah, it, I can't, like, I can't re-meet my parents, or, you know what I'm saying, I can't, mm, no, but you could fucking do is you could start changing your actions and your decisions to become somebody else, or not become someone completely else, but to do things completely differently. Though, and that could be many different things You could go hit the gym You could go outside You could go get a job You could go do many different things to prove that To literally prove that And It was a couple couple like weeks ago A couple months ago My mom told me All you do is sit there smoke and work now Like you don't do anything You sit there play the game after work And you smoke Like that's all you fucking do Really? Are you serious? Are you serious? So all this bullshit you've been bullshitting about me about getting a job, not doing shit, staying on the game all day. Now that I got up and went to go do something and get a job and all this stuff. Now you have a problem with me sitting here smoking after work when I'm trying to sit here and chill. Okay, that's fine. I'll show you. So I stopped smoking for a good two weeks. Now I stopped smoking. So I stopped smoking, right? And what? And what? What happened? It, what else does she have to say? What else bullshit is going to come with me? Because there's always going to be a hater. There's always going to be a doubter. There's always going to be a non-believer in everything you do. It could be your best friend. It could be your worst enemy. It could be anybody. Fucking anybody there is in this fucking world. It could be your damn mom, dad, brother, sister. It could be any of those people. Any of those motherfuckers who are going to sit there and say, Oh, well, you know, I didn't do it like that, so you should do it like this. No, what the fuck? No. I had I had heard this saying and it was like sometimes our parents can't understand what, what we think and what we want to do is because God didn't give them that vision. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's kind of hard to say, but it's like God just God just didn't have that vision for them or like they just didn't he just didn't give them that vision of Hey, I'm gonna start my own business or hey, I'm gonna do this like that or he he just didn't give it to them And you would think well, I mean like well apparently I mean he gave me that Well, maybe he gave your mom and the dad those different visions so you could truly live out your vision They always say there's a black goat in the family The black goat is the one who will change things who will sit there and make shit differently And I don't I don't hear none of my friends. I don't hear I don't hear none of my friends. I don't hear none of my brothers. I don't hear none of these, none of these dudes fucking sitting here say, yeah, let's do this, let's do that, let's make a company, let's do that, let's do it like this, let's go work every day, let's work out every day. I don't hear these motherfuckers saying that shit. So what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? They're gonna sit there, work normal jobs, have normal lives, and die in the normal rat race the government wants us to be in. And that's them. So I took it upon myself to become the best version of me, to become the strongest version of me, to become the smartest version of me, to become all these great qualities and attributes of me that is somewhere else in another world, universe, whatever, and bring it here into this timeline, into this world, into this now present time. Because if none of them are thinking about that or even have the same goals as that then what the fuck are you doing you sit there you want to be rich but you don't have a fucking plan you sit there and you want to be rich but you don't have a fucking job you sit there and have all these thoughts and feelings and all these different things but you don't have and you're not taking the steps to that dream to me i don't have dreams because I'll, I'll make my dreams into a reality so I don't have dreams nor goals. Because goals are something you would think you would never reach. And I will reach that. That's the problem. A lot of people are, have, oh, I have these goals to do this, do that. But I don't know if it's going to work. What do you mean it's going to, I don't know. You're just, you're literally doubting yourself that. You're literally telling yourself, oh, no, it probably might not work. So I'm not sure if I want to do it. Are you serious? Have you even tried? Have, have have you even like oh. 
And he was just like I was just like, bro, what what the fuck is this? And it, it is stupid. It is literally fucking stupid. Like, bro, I don't sit there and bullshit. I don't sit there and try to make excuses and Nah, I was that dude. <laughs> I was. I was the one. Nah, I don't feel like doing it, so I'm not gonna go. I don't feel like doing this, so I don't, I'm not gonna do it. And it's just like, what the fuck? It's literally like, what the fuck? Because if you can't sit there and tell yourself what the fuck you did wrong then, then how the fuck are you ever gonna man up to your own shit in the future? There's many times I fucked up. Even now I still fuck up. But okay, that's fine. I'm human. It's life. すごい。こうやって喧嘩してもらちがわかないだろう。みんな知り合いなんだ。収集がつかなくなるような事態にしたいわけじゃない。早くクセラに合わせる。もうこそこそすんじゃねえ。私の言ってることがわからないのか。それ
10 plus 2 is 6. Is 10 plus 2 is 12, right? At plus 4 is 6. So 6 hours of sleep. 6 hours of sleep. 2 3 hours in the morning for work. 4 5 6 7. 5 6 and 7 or 5 and 6 pretty much or at least at least an hour because I still need to get to work, still need to get dressed, I still need to get everything ready and prepared. So I generally just have 5 to 4 or 5 to 6 to do something. Then I go to work at 6 o'clock, get there at like 6.30, wait to 7, 7, 7 to 5, my job, at work, doing job, and that's it. That is my fucking day every single fucking day of the goddamn week. Are you serious? I don't give a fuck how much money they're paying me. I don't give a fuck who the fuck is there. I don't care if there's bad bitches there or whatever but your time and your health is another form of wealth my boy Gael and his brother worked there for a year already and what do they wear almost every single day a fucking back brace bro my boy Gael is 20 years old his brother probably like 25 24 wearing a back brace because their back hurts every day every day yet they sit there and work 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 putting all this strain on their back and whatever else are you serious bro really bro fuck no fuck no and not even in a million years i would go do that shit because your health is another form of fucking wealth. There is no point of becoming so fucking rich that you can't even go outside because your back fucking hurts. Or you're fucking, you're fucking, a fucking, what is it? A, a hunchback? And you can't even do certain things because your back. Or you can't even have all these nice cars because you're fucking because the way you're formed or you can't even have all these girls because you have a fucked up back or all this bullshit fuck no fuck no it is much rather better to be rich when you're 20 30 maybe even 40 than when you are when you're in your 60s or 70s bro it's even if you make it that far because in america motherfuckers barely even make it a 78 because of the shit we eat, the, the shit we drink, and all this other bullshit. Time is running out. Time is running out. The dollar's running out. All these things are running out. We might be in a war in 5, 10 years time. Who fucking knows? Who knows what this world will be in 5, 10 years time? That's why I mean I can't wait. I can't sit there at a fucking job wasting all my fucking time there. No time for me. No time for research. No time for business. No nothing. I have nothing when I work when I work at this job where I'm at. I have no time for anything. Not even for my streams. Because guess what? On my days off, what do I go do? I go do the things I have to do during that week if i had to go get shampoo i have to put that shit aside until my days off because i don't have the time to i don't have the luxury of time to go to the store come back home chill go go back out eat chill i don't have the luxury of that because why my job why i don't know I don't know. I used to go in at 5 in the morning so I could get off at 2. So I at least had 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 7 hours of fucking daylight. 7 to 6 hours of daylight I could use for my own purposes. My own purposes. That's two hours I could hit the gym. That's two hours I could do nothing but business research. That's one hour of gaming. That's one hour of chilling with my family or something. But am I allowed to do that? No. 
Why? Because I have a responsibility and I have this dumb fucking job that literally does not give a single crap about you. Only that if you show up or not. So that's it. That is the only difference. That's the only difference between having a job job and just a job. Like, don't get me wrong. There's a fucking Mexican restaurant that, I don't know, probably opens at like 8, 9, or even like 7, 6. And they close at 3 every day. 3. Think about them people. Yeah, they might not get paid as much. But what do they have that I don't have? Time. They have time to go spend with their families. They have time to go see people. They have time to go to the park. They have time to go to the pool. They have all this fucking time to go do what the fuck they want. Me? I don't get that luxury. I don't. And it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. Because when you sit there and you see people have more time than you, but you know you're making more money, it is a whole different feeling and mind trick on your body, bro. It is a whole different thing, bro. Because you know with that time that they had, they're sitting there wasting it. But if it was you with that time, I would sit there, go to the gym, go research, Go make some money or do something, something valuable with that time. Something that I wouldn't regret doing with that time. But you don't realize the value of time until you don't have any time. And it's dumb. It's dumb. It's just like, it's just like humans don't know the value of somebody until they're gone. It's just like that. Nobody knows the value of time until it's gone or until you're on your last fucking breath and you don't have nowhere to go. You don't have no one to see. You don't have no one there for you. So who, whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? You could say it's your job. You could say it's this. You could say it's that. No. Nothing is nothing's fault but your damn fault. It's one thing. A lot of people can't take responsibility. People are like, oh, well, Jeremiah, if you feel like that, you still got at least, like, four hours to do something. Really? Four hours? I get off at five. Get home around six because of traffic. And it's fucking retarded. So, boom. Six. I wake up at four in the morning every day, guys. Remember... So I should at least be asleep by 8 to get a full 8 hours. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 8. So if I get home at 6 every fucking day. And I have to be asleep by 8. I have 2 hours to eat. Be with my family. Do what I want. Play the game. Shower, work out, and all of these different things. Research the business. Try to get shit right. Try to get my driver's license. Trying to do things that I need in a matter of two fucking hours. You got me fucked up. And you can say, well, Jeremiah, you don't have to wake up at four. I'm not you. I'm not a pussy. I have shit to do. I get up at 4 because I need to work out. I get up at 4 because I want to get up early. I want to feel the tiredness. I want that. Well, Jermaine, you can just you can just wake up at 6 and, and then you can fall asleep at uh, 10. Really, bro? Wake up at 6 when I have to be at work at 7? So I'm giving myself less than 20 minutes to shower, to get ready for work, to get everything I need, and to collect my mind. Your brain doesn't fucking wake up till 30 minutes you wake up. I looked it up. Your brain doesn't fully awake until it's been up for 30 fucking minutes. So if I did woke up at 6, 
and say, let's say there's a crazy ass driver going to work and my brain is still waking up. I won't be ready for whatever the fuck he's about to do. My brain will not be fully awake to obviously respond, to react to all these different things that might happen. So no, I'm not going to put myself in that predicament. I would much rather go to work tired as fuck than to go to work half asleep and maybe, just maybe, I, I might make it. Because I'm telling you, there's plenty of times where I'm coming home from work and I am tired as shit. I could barely keep my eyes open on the fucking road. On the road, ladies and gentlemen, the road, the road you drive on. And I'm not going to sit there and fucking put myself through two hours of whatever just to please my fucking job. Fuck you. Fuck you, buddy. Your health is another form of wealth. And if you don't have that good amount of sleep, if you don't do what you low-key need to do or even want to do, that will mentally fuck you up. You will mentally, you will mentally start thinking like this. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. Uh, I can't even do this. I have to. I have to figure something out. Uh, that's how you're gonna start thinking. I nah, shit you not. You start thinking like that. You start thinking I can't do this. I can't do that. Then you're just gonna go straight to the bottom. Cause now you're putting all this stress and worry and all this bullshit in your fucking mind that wouldn't even be there if. If something's never changed. But that's the thing. Some things do change. Not everything stays the same. Not not everything will stay the same. Not every not every time they will be there for you. Not every time this will No, it's not like that. If it was like that, life would be a whole lot fucking easier, right? There are going to be people who are going to play with you. There are going to be people who are going to fuck with you. There's going to be people who generally just don't give a fuck about you and your opinion. But what do you have to do? You have to sit there, keep going, keep moving. Don't have no t expectations for nobody. For nobody. And thing is, that was my problem. I had... I had so many expectations for myself, but I had none to my friends. And that's the problem. You say, well, would you mind, um, um, would you mind, um, how, how are you, um, I don't know. Like, oh, Juma, uh, I don't fucking know, bro. But I know damn well for sure now, bro. If I have all these expectations on me, then I, I expect not the same expectations, but I at least need the same respect, the same whatever, bro. Like, I just can't have nobody off the same page as me. Cause if you're starting a business and one dude's fucking 20 pages behind and you're 20 pages ahead, what the hell is going that that's just gonna do? Nothing good. It's gonna it's gonna hit your business. Cause you got one dude in the past and you got another dude in the present. Or you if you're living with all your friends and let's say one of them doesn't pay the rent. Now guess what? Now you have to make up for their fuck up. And it is stupid, bro. Cause nah, why the fuck? I would never do that shit to my friends. But the thing is, would they do it to me? And that's where a lot of people don't give a shit at. They'll be like, oh, well, I know Jeremiah wouldn't do it to me, but it's okay if I do it to him. And I've seen it firsthand with my own friends.
Is it completely their fault? No. Completely my fault? No. But it's both of our faults, for sure. For sure it's both of our faults. Because... Because it, it was never like that, bro. It was never like that, bro. Tell you, bro, it was never, ever like that, bro. And it's dumb as hell, bro, because... Even even to this day, I still do whatever I can for my people, bro. No matter if I have to be broke for a week, I have to be broke. Not them. I have to be broke. But do they care? No. Do they ask me if I'm hungry? No. Do they ask me if I... No. So, that's why I say you gotta be selfish sometimes, bro. Because if you sit there and put yourself in someone else's shoes, more than half the time, they won't help you back. They won't. Because, who knows, maybe they have all these different things coming on. You know, or, oh no, I got this. Like, oh my god. Like, what? It is dumb, bro. It is dumb. It is straight dumb. And like I said, bro, even if you are my homie, even if you are my mans or my brother or any of that, bro, but if you fuck around and and not live up to at least being a fucking good man or even my own expectations even though I try to do whatever for everybody then no I'm not gonna take it anymore I don't care I don't care how long I've known you I don't care how long I've seen you I don't care about none of it what I care about is true men who protect and provide for their family who will do what is necessary not do what is necessary but do what needs to be done and who is generally true, trustworthy, loyal to obviously their people and friends. But if your own brother could step and shit on you, then guess what? Anybody can. You want brothers who respect you. You want brothers who care about you. Sometimes people are just not like that. They don't have the same, they're not built like you. Sometimes they're just not like that. Their brain is not wired like that. Okay, then that's fine. Then I'll show you that you fucked up. Or I'll show you that you lost a great friend, great brother. And it's done. There's so many things and ways to become the best version or just to at least start trying, taking those little steps to become better and better and better. But some people just can't fucking do that shit. They just can't because they, I don't know, they don't know how to, they don't feel like it or whatever. And it's just like, bro.
And he's just like, bro, like, fuck that. Fuck that, bro. Because I don't, I don't want, I don't want to surround myself by anybody lesser than me. Because if I surround myself by people less, what am I doing? I am taking in their worst, lesser energy, and while I'm giving them my great energy, great energy, great energy, while I'm taking their little bad energy, little bad energy, little bad energy, little bad energy. and if I'm not strong enough, or if I'm not confident enough, if I'm not fucking per perspicacious enough to change that negative energy into positive, then what am I doing? I'm putting nothing but weight and weight and weight and weight on my fucking shoulders that I do not need to have. I don't need to make everybody's problem my problem. I don't need to sit there and ha have my hand out help my people. I don't need to do that. But I do it because I was raised and I was taught to. If my parents never taught me, I probably still would have done it either way. Because as a person, as a human being, and as me, Jeremiah, or my soul, because I am not Jeremiah. I'm. That's just a fucking word. That's just a name. That's a placeholder for my body. That's all it is. Just a, a limit of your body. It's just a name of your body. Like... It's, it's just me. It's, it's generally just me. I, I would help out people who need help. I would help out my, my fucking friends who actually generally need it. I, I will sit there and put myself through the struggle before I put my friends any, anywhere else in the struggle. Like, I will sit there if my friend needs this and I at least have, like, say some of it. I will give them it while I put myself down. Two, three hundred dollars, and I only have sixty dollars to live for two days, three days, just so it feels better on my mind and conscience that hey, at least they're not struggling, right? That's what it means to be a fucking man. That's what it means to take care of the people you love. That's what it means to be genuinely a great friend and person. There's people who will sit there and take advantage and advantage and advantage and advantage. And what are you supposed to do about it? You could stop. You could stop everything you did. And it's just like. It's just like, okay, man. If you don't. Like, if, if you don't want to give me the, the same energy, the same goals, values, or let's just say the same energy and effort that I give you, bro, there's no point of me even giving you any. Because all I'm doing is throwing that energy to some place where... It would never come back. It is energy that I will never see again. It was it was energy that I could have used. It was energy that was obviously mine in the first place. Not nobody else's. Nobody. It was mine. Yet I decided to give it away to help somebody. And don't get me wrong. God is God will fucking love you for that. But at the same time, even him, he can't just open all the doors for everybody. He can't. Sometimes you have to open the door. Or sometimes you even might have to close that door. Depends on what we're talking about. If you started smoking a bunch of weed, you opened up that door. You made that decision. And you wanted to stop. God ain't just going to fucking make you stop. You sit there and smoke weed every day of your life. Now it's a habit. Now it's a hobby. Now it's so consistent that you do it every fucking day. You have to close that door. 
And I said on my story, I don't care if you're my brother, my friend, my sister. If you're not being the best version of you or even trying to be, block me, delete me, don't text me, don't call me. Because I don't want that shit. I don't want that weak mind or that energy on me. Because all it'll do is bring me down. It'll bring down my dreams, my hopes, my goals, or whatever the fuck. Even though I said I don't have dreams nor goals. Because I will make what I want into reality. And that is it. And it's just like, well, what am I supposed to do? Right? Well, what am I supposed to do then? Huh? Just not have any friends or not have any... No? They sit there and take you for granted. Or they sit there and just have nothing but bad talks, bad thoughts about you and whatever you want to do. Then no. You don't need them. You don't need that shit. You don't need that bullfuck. That fucking dumb fuck in your shit. You don't need it. <laughs> my bad, I was sitting watching that. But. If you don't sit there and you show your respect, you don't sit there and you show your gratitude, if you don't sit there and show your love to the people who you care and truly want the best for, then you're not being the best version of you. If you don't sit there and say thank you, if you don't sit there and say I appreciate it or anything along those lines, I love you to your mom or dad, you are not being grateful. You're not being grateful enough for what they did and what they sacrificed for you. Or even your people or your friends, your family, your brothers, your sister. If you don't sit there and say that shit, you are not being the best version of you. The best version of you will be respectful. The best version of you is the disciplined version of you. The one who gets up and goes to work every day. The one who gets up and does this and this and that. The one who says, I don't give a shit, I have to do what I need to do. That is the best version of you. And if you can't live up to the best version of you, then stay at the bottom. Or wherever the fuck you're at. Where you're at is where you deserve to be at. You deserve to be there. You deserve not having food all the time. You deserve that. Because why? That's the same energy you're putting out. That's the same energy you're putting out to yourself, to the universe, and to the people around you. 
And if you truly want the best for the people around you, you will get the fuck up and go to work. You will get the fuck up and hit the gym. You will get the fuck up and be the best version of you could possibly ever be to do that. And a lot of people, man, <laughs> a lot of people are like, nah, I'm good. I'll be all right. I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like doing this. Then get the fuck out of here. I said it on my Instagram and I'll say it here. If you're not being the best version of you, please get off of my stream. Don't ever find my Instagram. Don't ever look at my YouTube videos. Don't do none of that. Because I don't need that. I want people who want the best, who are the best, who truly love and care and respect and are grateful for everything that they fucking have. That's the people who I want, that's the people who I want to attract, and that's the people who I will attract. Those are the people who sit there and say, you know what, I did do that wrong, but then tomorrow I will fix it. Or you know what, whenever I see that person tomorrow, I will tell them I am sorry. You know what, if I see that person tomorrow, I will tell them thank you. My dad for Father's Day, he didn't even want me to do anything for him. He didn't. Oh, well, dad, I'm not going to be here for the weekend, so I don't know. I don't know what we could do. I said, okay, fine then. Yesterday was Thursday. I said, okay, let's go eat, me and you. To show him great. Oh, dad, come on, man, dad. You don't have to do that. I don't give a fuck if I don't have to or not. The best version of me will take my dad out, will take my mom out on occasions. It doesn't matter if it's a special day or not. But I will to show them gratitude, to show them love, to show them respect, to show them everything that they gave me when I was once a little child and I couldn't do shit for myself. But now I can do. I have a brain. I have a brain that actually is developed or developing. I have legs that I could walk on. I have arms to open doors for them. I have fingers to take grasp, take control of my fucking life. Like, I have a tongue to speak gratitude. I have eyes to see the beauty of the world. I have ears to hear the beautiful sounds, to hear the I love you's, to hear the birds, to hear the ocean. Like, I have feet to walk on land, to explore, to adventure, to experience. I have all these things. That God gave me so I could do better for my mom. I could do better for my dad. I could do better for my friends and family. A lot of people don't see it like that though. A lot of people are, yeah, whatever. I just got lucky. Really? You got lucky. Let me tell you something. When I was born, and like the first week or two I was born or like, I don't know, the first month I was out the house, like the first week or two I was out the hospital, I had gotten bit by a poisonous spider. A poisonous spider. And I was in the hospital for a whole week. A whole week. My parents used to tell me that shit all the time. But why didn't I die? Why didn't I, or why did I get a second chance? How did they even know it was a poisonous spider? Or how did, you know what I'm saying? There's so many things. How did, why didn't the spider not bite my toe, but not my arm or my face or anything? All these different things that could happen. Bacteria, sickness, COVID, all these different things that could have took my life, but it didn't. All the times I was hurt, all the times I was pleading, all the times I was sad, I could have took, or I could have not took my own life, but that could have took my own life, but didn't know why there is a greater purpose for me. There's a greater purpose for you. There's a greater purpose for everybody. But you have to sit there and you have to fucking work, grind, sweat, tears, Look, you have to sit there and get it. It doesn't just get handed down to you. Because if everything was handed down to everybody, 
Everybody would be winners. No one would be a loser. There would be no such thing as poor and rich. Winners, losers. Justice and whatever. Crime. There would be no such thing because everything's right. God gave it to you so everything would be right. But just like the world, the yin and yang, the good and evil and the evil and good, that's what balances the earth. That's what balances life. That's what brings balance to the universe. If there was no balance and everybody had what they wanted, it will be nothing but maybe, I don't know, great times. It's either a great time or a fucking shitty time. It's either one of those. But since everything is in balance, since everything is here on Earth, you can control your own fucking destiny here. Here, you have to understand that, yes, you will go through hard times. Yes, you will feel sad. You'll go through heartbreak. Yes, you will get mad and you want to beat the fuck out of somebody. And all these bad emotions. But without those bad emotions. Without these triggers. Without these negative. You would never ever have the positive. You wouldn't even know what positive means. You wouldn't. You would have no fucking clue. What the fuck is it. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. This is what I wrote. It doesn't matter what color I write with or even the color I am. On paper it doesn't because words still hold the same value as if it was pen or pencil. Just like the differences in black and white. It is nothing but the same. We are the same. If I s fucking stab you in your fucking neck, you're gonna die. You're gonna sit there oh, and die. You're gonna sit there and bleed and die. Are we any different? No. Then why do we have different colors? Or not different colors, but why do we have different opinions about our colors? It fucking retarded. Butter and toast, peanut butter and jelly, without one another, one cannot exist. If there was no black, there would be no white. If there was no white, there would be no black. You gotta realize, there's differences because the differences bring in harmony to themselves and the universe. There can't just be one and one. No, it has to be one and two, or two and one. It can't just be two separate whole things it has to be connected everything is connected everything is one all this shit all the, the tv your ps5 your your laptop your your phone your notebooks your wall all this shit was once one it was once energy energy all this is energy all around us is nothing but energy and matter. Matter cannot, energy cannot be created nor destroyed or matter. So therefore, this was always here. This PS5 was always here. This microphone was always here. This TV was always here. This phone was always here. Hold on. この美しい風景も、そばに誰もいない以上
私の不変を引き立たせるだけ連れ連れなるままに日暮らしすずりに向かいて。If there was no black, there would be no white. If there was no blue, there would be no red. If there was no purple, there would be no fucking pink. If there was no. There was no love, there would be no hate. If there was no sad, there would be no happy. If there was no anger, there would be no calmness. So that's why we have these different feelings, different colors. Different skins or just different thoughts and opinions because if one didn't exist, then the other one couldn't coexist. And it's that simple. And the thing is, if there's an equal and an equal and opposite force of everything that what they do, of everything we do, then Then where is the other me? Where is where is the negative Jeremiah at? You know what I'm saying? Where is the the not nice Jeremiah? Where is the sad Jeremiah? Where is the mad Jeremiah at? Where is he at? Where? If there's an equal and opposite energy or force that coexists with our actions and decisions, there's a reaction. There's an action, there's a reaction. Where is it? Where are they? Who knows? I don't fucking care. Because guess what? This is one of the better versions of me that I am becoming. So, if energy is neither created or destroyed, I always had this energy. I probably always had it in me or around me. And it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make sense. Because if I always had this energy, then why, where was it at a couple years ago? Because, I'll tell you one thing, I didn't want it enough. I, I didn't put my mind to it enough. I didn't think enough. Like, where would the other Jeremiah be and what were they doing? What would they be currently doing? It is 5.08. Where would I be at? Would I still be at work on the way home? Would I still, would I, would I be out and about with my friends? Would I be out here smoking right now? Where, where would I be at if there's an equal and opposite force of everything we do? The thing is, if I'm doing everything positive, then there's an equal and opposite force that's negative. And it's pushing it away. It's pushing it away. Or it's pulling, it's trying to pull me back. Or it's trying to bring me into that. But if it's an equal and opposite force, then it will be pushed away as long as I don't let it get to me. Because negativity and all this bad thing is everywhere. It's everywhere. If you look at your phone, I guarantee you there's going to be someone who's 
bullshitting or there's going to be someone who's stupid or I don't know I genuinely don't know but there's definitely going to be negativity on there and that's how it works but if I look at nothing but the positive I'm bringing nothing but positive if I'm thinking nothing but positivity, I'm bringing myself nothing but positivity. If I do nothing but great actions and good actions, if I don't, then I will get great results. If I sit there and I hit the gym as hard as I can every day, then I will become bigger and stronger. And a lot of people don't understand the simple laws of just the universe or even earth newton's law is i don't even know what i don't even know if it's a nature law or if it's just the universe law or what yeah it, it's like a universal law though with every reaction there's an action a reaction there's a reaction like, Another thing I wrote. How could choices affect reality? How could simple mistakes or good decisions make what is than what is not? I don't know. It's a question that may never even be answered. But I'll tell you one thing. Choices can affect your reality. Choices of thinking positively, working out, going to the gym, being respectful, being honorable, being all these great things. Then yeah, shit will change. Shit will change. But if you sit there and think nothing but bad and negative and negative and negative and bullshit, bullshit, you're bringing nothing but bullshit into your mind and you bringing it into your mind will bring it into reality everything you put in your mind slowly puts puts a vibration on you and the surroundings your surroundings where it doesn't even have to be by vibration it could be a hurt it could be a, a certain brain wave it could be something that we do not see physically with our own naked eye that attracts and slowly brings these bad things and these bad thoughts like all this when I was whenever I was writing it it said there's there's about like two three messages it says you are not alone I love you and you matter those are great messages little messages like that could hold so much meaning and they could really save a person's life does it matter whose life no did the person one day think it could help or save someone someone's life perhaps since that's probably the reason why they read it but who knows maybe they read it for themselves because they didn't have someone who said, I love you. They didn't have someone say, you matter. They didn't have someone say, you are not alone. So therefore, they put it down so one day, if someone was feeling like that, they would see that and think, you know what, life isn't, isn't bad. Or life isn't as bad as I thought it would be. It's just I don't have the right people. I don't have the right energy. I don't have the right mindset. I don't have the right body to achieve what I want to achieve. Right? And another thing is, a lot of us don't know what truly is right nor wrong. We really don't. But I could tell you one thing that is for sure that is probably a, almost guaranteed the right answer and is and is to do what you believe is right and that's 
if there isn't any right and wrong, but yet you do everything you feel like you believe is right, is it right or wrong? If someone tells you to do it like this, but you believe there's a better and faster way to do it, are you right or wrong? Maybe to the limitations to wherever you're at. Maybe your job says do it like this, don't do it like that. Maybe they, they're going to say you're wrong. But in your mind, you really generally believe you're right. So who is right or who is wrong? It, it, is, it is false. Right and wrong is false. There is no such thing as right or wrong. The only thing that would be considered wrong is doing something you know damn well you're not supposed to be doing. So, sitting there, I don't know, sitting there and talking shit to the boss, sitting there doing nothing, sitting there bullshitting. It's things you don't do because in society they say it's wrong. But let's say if that boss was sitting there and didn't pay you for weeks on end told you this and that and you believe that if i don't put my foot down he will keep playing with me are you right or are you wrong it it, it, it doesn't it, you just don't know you don't understand it is a question that can have many answers yet what is the right answer so, I don't know. I ask myself questions like these every day. Questions that I have every day, but have little to no answers. Because they sit there and make me think. They sit there and make me figure out what is what I'm asking. You know what I'm saying? Another way to find if it's a right or wrong answer is... If that solution to that answer is only benefiting you or the people around you and yourself. So if you sit there and say, I don't want to go to work. And you sit there and you do it for yourself. Right? But you know your mom needs your things paid and all this other shit. Are you right or are you wrong? You are wrong because if you're making that decision purely off of yours... But you know, say your mom needs help with rent, or you need this and she needs that, and you're not putting your family, friends, or whoever the fuck in front of you, you are wrong. Yes, you could be selfish. Yes, you could do this. Yes, you could do that. But in reality, if you're not putting the answer in front of you and your people, is that answer you're going to get the one where you don't put everybody in front of you is that truly the right answer most likely not and you still have to ask yourself is this the best answer i could come up with have i looked or tried in all my options will i find or do better in time these are questions that have almost little to no answers. Have I, is this the best answer I could come up with? Have I tried into looking into all my options? Will I find better or do better in time? These are questions with no answer because you don't know. In time, things could go for the better or for the worse, but it's truly about what you throw in your mind. If you truly believe in time, you will have better be stronger, be more reliable, be res more respected, be more feared, or more, let's say, masculine, you know what I mean? If you throw these thoughts into your mind, you will attract nothing but the greater good. You, trick, you, you will trick your mind into thinking, I am the best, I am this, I am that. So therefore, your brain will send out signals to the environment around you to bring that to you. But if you sit there and you bullshit yourself, if you sit there and you lie, if you sit there and you're dishonest, if you sit there and you're unfucking loyal, you will never have anything that you wish for. 
You will never be that strong man you want to be because you are sitting there downing yourself. You are sitting yourself. You are you are literally setting yourself on fire before the fucking gasoline is on you. Because you're so worried about this or that, yet you didn't even get the fuck up and try to go do it. You are drowning yourself in water that is literally invisible. Or you're you're choking on air that you can't see. And it's crazy. Life is all about adventure, meaning, sacrifice, feeling. But it's really up to you if you want to sit there and go through life as and look at it as an adventure. To look at it as, you know what, this is a crazy mystery, but let's go do it. No matter what life throws at me. I put right here, I will take hardship with dedication. I will take anger with calm, calm humility or calm, calm humility. I don't fucking know. Calm humility. Struggles with faith. Setbacks with gratitude. I will sacrifice myself even if it's for the better or for the best of everyone. As in, now I'm going to sell my soul to the fucking devil. But I will sit there and work 60, 65 hours, 70 hour fucking weeks to make sure damn well my family is fed. My house and bills are paid. And everybody who I love and care about are good and perfectly fine and healthy. That's what I mean by I will sacrifice myself. Not that I, I will fuck give my soul to the devil. No, fuck that. You could say, oh, well, some people do it for for their people and this and this and that. Well, they never had God. Or they probably did, but God didn't want that. God wanted you to struggle. He put you through hardship so you could learn from it. He put you through pain so you could get so you could become stronger from it. He puts you through setbacks so you could bounce back from it. He puts you through fucking hell so you could be grateful for what you have or what you had. He puts you through struggles to test your faith. To test if you truly are becoming or if you're truly 100%, 110% believe in what you want to believe or what you want to do he'll throw setbacks in your fucking face to see if you are even ready for that if you can't sit there and come back from a setback can you really come back from the best of your ability from being at the top all and then you get set back to the bottom do you really think you could jump that again being all the way at the top millions Cars, houses, girls, whatever, boys, whatever the fuck, who, whoever's listening, whoever you are. And, throw, and he throws you right back out of the bottom. If he never gave you a setback, how will you know and how will he know that you can get through that? Or if anything did go wrong, you can become better than it. How would he know and how would you know? Another thing, if you truly want to walk through the light, if you truly want to know how the light is, how it feels, how it tastes, just the light, obviously like light and dark, right? Good and bad. You will have to know damn well what bad and evil is because therefore you will never truly know what is good nor the light you would never truly know if you sat there and you went through nothing but great and good times you will never be strong enough for when you are up there in those big great times and god gives you a setback and you never went through those dark times you will never know how to get back from it you will never know how to get through it you'll never know how to solve it you will never know 
even if you're in a bad time or not because you never even experienced it. You have to traverse the dark to get to the light. But you can fall from the light into the dark. But you can't fall from the dark into the light. You can't. You have to walk that path. You could sit there and stop and take a rest break, but you have to walk forward. You have to traverse the dark. Jordan Peterson said, he or he got asked this certain question. It was something about the abyss. If you sat there and you were in the abyss your whole life and you traverse the abyss, sooner or later, you will find light. You will see the small little guides of light in the abyss however if when you traverse the abyss and the darkness and the evil and all the bad things in life there's a chance you will succumb to it fall break down cry be mad and all these negative emotions that can happen you can become truly lost in the abyss emotionally physically and mentally However, if you keep moving like he was saying, and you keep walking, you will slowly, slowly see the fragments of light coming, coming out the abyss. Something you truly never thought would ever be there. But if you truly walk through it, believe, you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. You will see the easy ways compared to the hard way. You will know when to make the right decision and when to make the other decision. Because we won't say wrong. Because if you truly believe what is right, then what is wrong? If you truly believe what you do is right, then who is to tell you that is right or wrong? He will throw you trials and tribulations, but you have to stay relaxed, focused, loving, and most importantly, strong. You have to be strong, male or female. You have to be mentally strong to get through life. All those people who killed themselves, no disrespect, but I guaranteed you they were not mentally strong enough. They weren't. So they took the easy way out. Maybe God gave them that choice and only that choice. But there was definitely some point in their life they could have disregarded everything they went through. Even though that is truly probably one of the hardest things you could really do in life. Especially if, say, you're a girl you got raped. Or even if you're a guy and you got raped. Or you lost your parents early. Or anything. You got abused. Whatever. There's truly points in your life where you could take fate or destiny by the fucking hand or the heart and you could squeeze that motherfucker until that motherfucker beats on your own terms or moves where you move. There are places, there are choices, there are many different actions where you can truly control your own destiny. You can truly change your own fate. But not a lot of people see that nor know that. Everything I thought was happening, I thought it was because of fate. I thought God put me in that predicament because obviously there's something else at the end of the tunnel. Don't get me wrong, I do still see it like that. But now I still I see it like this I have way more control than I thought I did I have way more control of my feelings my thoughts my actions and my decisions than I ever did in my life I thought if I didn't sit there and say anything someone would come do it for me or someone would could save me but it's not like that It's not like that. And it's fucking stupid.
It is fucking stupid, bro. You have to know dark to know light. You have to know pain to know joy. You have to know sadness to know happiness. You have to know all the negative to the positive. You have to know these things because if you don't know the difference between one or another, you could never truly be grateful or thankful for anything that you fucking have. Anything. You'll never know true harmony if you never went through the bad. If you only went through nothing but great light, great white light, you'll never know harmony. You'll never know the darkness of the world. You never know anything. You'll never know. You wouldn't know. You must learn to take control of your life. You must learn to take control of your mind. You must learn to take control of your own actions and decisions because it truly destines and changes your future and your fate more than you generally think it does. If you see a beautiful girl on the street and you take that chance to just go say hi and mention your name and maybe even ask her on a date, and who knows, you might just score the best wife in the fucking world. But if you never took that chance, you never took that risk to go sit there and talk and even mention your name and just even ask, even if it, there's a risk of her saying no, you would never know that experience. You'll never know that feeling. You'll never know that life that you could have had. You could have had. Could have. But what did you do? You sat there and you procrastinated. You sat there and you doubted yourself. You sat there and thought, maybe I'm not good enough. You sat there and changed your own fucking destiny just by two, three little fucking thoughts. And I changed mine the other day. I had saw this beautiful girl at the park, my age. She had a worse car than me, which was fine. But she was beautiful. She was sitting there looking at her tires. I wanted to say what's up to her so bad, but did I do it? No. And then I was going to leave, but then I was like, you know what? I'll wait for her to come back to maybe I'll say something. I sat there and started writing. Next thing you know, like 20 minutes later, she's already back. Did I go up to her? No. Why? Because there was someone there. I didn't want to look stupid. Or I didn't want to get rejected in front of somebody. But who would have known that could have been truly my my wife? That could have been truly a whole life that could have changed everything. Just because I didn't want to go say hi. Or do you need some help? Or anything. But... I truly thought about it like this. I do not need to focus on women right now. Because if I'm not the best version of me, what makes me think I could take care of her? Yeah, I might be strong. Might have some money. Might have a car. Don't have a house yet. Or an apartment. Yeah, I have some things. Maybe I could work on some things, but if, but if I'm not truly strong, truly dependable, truly faithful in all these different aspects of being a husband, then no, I'm not going to sit there and completely lie to her face and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and when the time comes, I can't. Or when the time comes, it just won't happen. No, I'm not going to sit there and lie to her.
この世を渡り歩くにはより多くの身分を持った方が便利なの君にもいくつか作ってあげようか Like, nah, bro. If you you have to ask yourself, what do I truly want? Who do I truly want to become? Who do I tr? What do I truly want to accomplish? And how? Can I accomplish these things? It starts off with simple questions of life and reality as you know it to change your own reality. It starts with writing down your goals, dreams, life lessons, anything. Like, you have to know, or not even know, but you have to sit there and think and truly think who do I want to be? I always wanted to be one of those gangster dudes who had those beautiful, those nice suits on, big guns, big business, but I, I truly wanted. The, the outfit, the business, the money, the guns. I didn't want the drugs. I don't want the crime. I don't want the feds. I don't want that. But I want the money, the business, the people, the suits, and the guns. That's what I truly want. Okay? I've been wanting that since I was fucking like five or six years old. So if I know what I truly want, then I know what I could truly work towards and work for. But if you're sitting there thinking, I don't know what I want, but I know I have to sit here and work, then what the fuck are you doing? Literally, what the fuck are you doing? You could sit there and go to college and not know what the fuck you're doing, but when you get out of the college and you don't have a fucking major, what the fuck did you do for four years? Of your goddamn life, you'll never get fucking back. All that money, time, energy, all that shit, those sleepless nights, all that studying, all that brain power you put into those four years of bullshit ass school, for what? For what? How, for what? And. How would you truly think or believe that you would get whatever the fuck you want if you just walk around aimlessly? Or you sit there and work hard but you have no goal? Or you sit there and you spend, spend, spend and not save? What, what do you think is going to fucking happen? You're going to be stuck in the fucking rat race. And I'll tell you one thing. I understood this world long, long time ago when I was a kid, bro. Long time ago. When I knew marriage, about marriage, and you're supposed to protect and provide and all this shit, right? Or, like, just all this shit, right? All this shit. You're supposed to love each other till death and till death do you part and you're supposed to be there at sick times and best times. And then 
found out years later there's a fucking thing called divorce. I just knew everything was a fucking lie. How the hell are you gonna sign your own fucking name and last name, give your last name to somebody, and all this shit, yet there's something where you could, there's a fucking backup card, or there's a get me out of jail free card, like are you serious? When I found out divorce was a thing, I knew this world was fake. I knew this world was stupid. I knew this world was fucked. Because if you truly love somebody, that will never, ever be the option. You will sit there through pain, suffering, love, hate. You'll sit there through all those emotions to be with a person you truly love and truly want to be with. No matter what. And I knew that from a long time ago as a kid. And then I found out about the rats race. You find out about the rats race. You find out where people sit there and work and work and work and work their whole life. Retire at 65. Then they get a nice house. Then they get a nice car. And then they have all these nice things when they're old. And fragile and dead. I knew it was fake. I knew what society could do. I know what society does to men. I know what society does to women. It breaks you down to your fucking knees and your fucking belly and it makes sure you never get the fuck back up. You never get back on your two feet again. You never have a say in anything. You never even could raise your fucking hand for even just an opinion you have. That's when I truly knew this world was fucked. Truly. And couple years ago bro my way of thinking is I always had this way of thinking I want to start a business I want to do this I want to do that I want to do this but it was so drilled into my head that you can't do nothing you have to sit there and work for the rest of your life you have to sit there and bullshit people jobs companies and try to be the best in your job just to fucking have a better car than whoever the fuck works there I knew it and I accepted it I accepted that you know what maybe I won't be nothing I I accept that maybe I won't be nothing and I'll have to sit here and live a a decent life not a life I would want to worth living but it would just be a decent regular normal life that the government wants nah no, fuck that Fuck that. When Andrew Tate first started saying all them words and shit, I truly felt what he meant to the heart. Because those same dreams, those same ambitions, those same lessons he was saying, I truly felt one time before, if not many times before. I truly thought, thought about fighting and protecting for my family, dying for the person I love and protecting and providing for everybody who I care and love about making sure all my friends and family are okay no matter what even if I went to jail god forbid but so I could share the same mindset or mentality or even just the same goals as he has for not just himself, but for the people around him. So I truly resonate with what he says. I'm not. It's not because I'm misogynistic. It's not because women can't do this or that, or men have to do this and that. No. It's because truly, what he says is those things that the government tells you, the government wants. Is nothing but a lie. Nothing but a lie. You know, I always kind of figured the world, the government, was a lie. Literally. 
if we had I cause I was a big football and basketball fan you know what I mean I used to love watching that shit but this is when it really hit me if they have millions of dollars just 1500 1500 million dollar contract or 20 million dollar contract for new QB starting QB straight out of the first draft and all those other people in the NFL are getting like 1 to 2 million every person there's motherfuckers we don't even see on that field. They're like the fifth string, but they're getting paid just as good. Or well enough. Well above the average person, for sure. Yet there's people starving. There's people in Africa who don't have food nor water. There's there's so much discord in the fucking world. But here, in the United States, we have fucking football players fucking throwing themselves around. Catching balls and shit for millions of dollars? Really? Why would I want to sit there and become a football NFL player? Because that was my dream. Be a football NFL player. When I know there's there's kids, there's people, there's mothers and fathers who can't even fucking feed themselves or their children. Or even have a fucking house to live in. All these fucking NFL players, basketball, they don't give a fuck about that shit. There's probably some people who, there's probably some people who fucking like, alright, bet, yeah, okay, for sure. But, like, nah, bro, nah. Like, it's fucking dumb. It is crazy. And it's fucking crazy, bro, because I would never do that shit to anybody. If I was the government or anything, them taxpayer dollars will go towards the homeless to build homes, to have a place, to have somewhere to eat, sleep, fucking shower whatever but no it's not like that the world isn't built on that the world is built on greed and discord and violence that's what the world is built on it is built on the the most powerful people in the world who don't give a fuck about anybody but their damn selves half of those people up there in the world don't even, probably don't even give a fuck about their family and that's the sad part. If if they had to sacrifice their family for hundreds and billions and billions of dollars, they would probably fucking do it. Even though they have billions and billions of fucking dollars. Think about it. When COVID first came out and I had my parents sick, bro, I was fucking scared shitless. Because I knew it was fake. I knew... I fucking... I knew... It wasn't right. So when I sat there and I heard my mom coughing, barely breathe, even my dad coughing, barely breathing, you don't know how much, like, how much feelings festered in me, hatred, and just all these different emotions that I was feeling because the government put my parents through that. Not themselves, the government did that. They made them go get a shot, some bullshit ass shot that didn't fucking work, just so they could keep their jobs and stay in the slave system. That's what pissed me off and hurt me the most. You think those people care? They don't lie. They're truthful. No, that's fucking stupid. It is fucking retarded to think that if you're in charge of the world that you won't go through little hoops and loops to get to where you need or to get to what you want. If the fucking rich can do it, why can't the government? If the rich can bend the rules, why can't the people who make the rules do it? I don't know. I truly don't know.
Because without it, it's fucking stupid. Without the people who truly stand up against the government and the evil and the discord in this world, without those people, this world would have been fucked already. And a lot of you motherfuckers could say, oh, well, it's already been fucked. Uh, and, um, or the government's truly good. Uh, or whatever. You're fucking retarded. You're straight fucking retarded. Straight fucking retarded. Because you cannot... You cannot have peace without war. You cannot have love without hatred. You cannot have happiness without sadness. You just can't. You cannot have evil without good. You can't have the devil without God. Because there's always an equal and opposite force at every decision or action that you make every action there is a reaction it is simple fucking science simple basic knowledge that people just fucking forget stupid shit stupid shit that will generally could change your fucking life but people just forget about it fucking retarded push and pull yin and yang sun and water fucking the sun and the moon, water and fire, air and earth. Straight fucking retarded. It is truly straight retarded that there's people who generally believe that they have no control in their life. They're, you can control many things. You can control if you're broke. You can control if you're happy. You control if you're sad. So you can you control so many fucking things. If you sit there and broke, and if you sit there and you're saying, "Oh, well, I'm broke all the time," well. Let's let's see what you spend your money on. Do you go out every day? Do you eat out every day? Do you go buy groceries every every week? Do you go do this? Do you go do that? And it will show you your fucking answer. If you sit there and you go out every day, you're going to be fucking broke. Whose fault is it? Yours, not mine. I stay inside, so I don't spend money. Because money makes the fucking world go round. So if you don't fucking have it, don't expect shit. And if you don't expect to fucking work, then don't expect anything coming to you. You can't sit there and put in the work. Then guess what? You won't have that nice car. You won't have a nice house. You won't have nothing that you want. So you have to sit there and bite the fucking bullet. And work. And dedicate yourself to something. If it's being true to your word, perfect. If it's being honest, whatever you want. Or you want that nice car, then dedicate yourself to fucking work. And it is generally fucking stupid. People are like, Jeremiah, you've never been like this. Jeremiah, you, you, uh, you never talk like that. Or Jeremiah, you, you were quiet. Or this and this and that. I was to myself because all y'all are fucking stupid. Literally. Y'all are fucking stupid. Sit there and talk for what? So my fucking... 
thoughts and feelings could go in one ear and out the other. Fuck you, bro. I'll save my breath, I'll save my time, I'll save my energy, and I'll save my words for people who generally give a fuck about themselves and their fucking lives. Because there's st stupid ass motherfuckers who don't give a shit. You could say, oh, I don't give a fuck about this. I don't give a fuck about my job. I don't give a fuck about life. I don't give a fuck about myself. Well, that just goes to show me that you don't give a fuck. So everything that bad happens to you is your fucking fault. Since you want to sit there and say you don't give a fuck. Okay, then. When all the bad shit comes around, I want to hear that shit again. Oh, you don't give a fuck that's happening to you? Good. Good. You don't give a fuck you lost your car? Good, I'm glad. Because you put that on yourself. You didn't want to take responsibility because you said you didn't want to give a fuck and you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. Then it, it is perfectly in your control that you could lose whatever fuck you have because you don't give a fuck. If you don't give a fuck about your life, no one else gives a fuck about you. Maybe your mom or your dad, but to a certain extent, they really don't give a fuck about you. They really don't. A lot of you people, I'm pretty sure your moms and your dad said, when you're 18, I want you to fuck out the house. Right? Pretty sure you heard that before. I know I have. So do they truly give a fuck? No. Yeah, maybe they do. Like, they do give a fuck about you doing good or you have a job and this, this, that. But at the end of the day, we are living our own fucking lives. We have our own goals, our own dreams, and our own personal fucking shit that we want to do. Literally. So if you sit there and bullshit yourself and just... Just literally just bullshit yourself. Don't expect anything. Don't expect anything from your friends. Don't expect anything from your parents. Don't expect anything from your fucking damn self either. If you truly sit there, you don't give a fuck about your life. I genuinely feel bad for you. Because that goes to show that no matter what life throws at you, you will not give a fuck. And you will stay in the same shitty predicament you put yourself in because you don't give a fuck. Whose fault is it? Your fault. Not mine. Not your mom's. Not your dad's. Not your brother's. Not your sister's. It is only your fault. sit there and be stupid all your fucking life then do it I'm not you you're not me I don't care nobody cares about you nobody especially when your parents are gone what are you going to do when your fucking parents are gone huh what are you going to do the reason why I got up and started doing shit is because if my parents passed in like three four five months ago or I passed what would they say about me what would they say? Oh, um, yeah, he was a football player and stuff when he was a kid, but like, but like, now all he does is smoke weed and play the game. Really, bro? That's what y'all motherfuckers are gonna remember, remember me by? Just a dude who just sat there and played the game and ain't do shit with his goddamn life? So that's why I got the fuck up and started doing shit. And it, and it wasn't just cause it was, it was personal. No. It was, no, it, it wasn't just cause if they would have said that it would have been on me no 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 it wasn't just because of that it was mostly because if my parents died that's all they would have fucking remembered that that's all they would have worried about too on those last moments those last press they would have had was damn this nigga has no job this nigga doesn't do shit he sits down plays a game all fucking day and smokes weed that's all he fucking does do i need my parent dying in a emotional state like that do I need them stressing on their final breaths? No. 
when they die, I want them to die peacefully. That's why we say rest in peace. Not rest in pieces. Not rest in paradise. Not rest in pussy. It's fucking retarded. It's you rest in peace. And I would want to bring my parents peace before they die to myself and to them so they could move on to another life or to another fucking universe or whatever the fuck to and just be free that I don't want them to have any earthly attachments and that's one thing a lot of you people have you have too many earthly attachments you have to learn to let go. The other day, I had a fucking dream where my brother fucking died, bro. I, I, I think I was in Saudi Arabia or something. And I, I had just left the apartment. And it was me and my brother. And he, he stayed inside and I went to go somewhere. I don't know. I was like in a fucking, I want to say like those big prayer things. Um, I forgot what it is. But it's like the big prayer thing, right? And I was there. I was sitting there praying. I remember. Because I remember the floor and like everybody had their mat. And then I remember I was sitting there like... I, I don't remember I was exactly praying. But I remember the position I was in. And it was the praying Muslim position. Where they get on their knees and they pray on the mat. And I was there. And next thing you know, I hear is... Bombs, 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 dropping all around us, all around the church, all around the people who came to pray that day. Don't get me wrong. There are some places that didn't get hit. There are some places that didn't get touched at all. But you know what happened to my place where I was staying at? That shit got blown the fuck up. And I called my brother that same second. What happened? Sorry, the number you dial is out of service. Out of service. Or the phone is just completely gone. What did that tell me? That my brother fucking died. So you have to learn to let go. You have to learn to let go of your family, your friends, and everybody. Because if you are not ready to let go, you are not ready for anything. Because life will come at you faster than you fucking expected. So in that dream, when I realized it was a dream, I sat there and I took all the fucking pain. I cried the cried. I did. I screamed the scream. I put out so much emotion. Now I know exactly how it feels when my brother dies. And most likely my siblings and mom and dad. I know exactly how it feels because I lived it in a dream. I know the experience. I know the pain. I know the suffering because I left it all in a dream. And it's crazy because you're like, Jeremiah, well, how do you even remember your dreams? I'm not normal. I always remembered my dreams. I remember dreams that I had from like four or five years ago. I remember a dream where I was with one of my ex-girls and we were in a beautiful, nice white house, chandelier in the middle, white marble table, glass chairs, and I walk up into the room, open the door, she's laying there in bed waiting for me on her phone, she had just got off work too, and I go in the closet, I put my bag down, bag full of fucking money, I tell her to count that shit, I go in my closet, I open up my closet, I take off my jacket, I put on the hanger, put on the hanger and I see a big ass AK in the back and all my guns right there. We have a gumball machine right there in the, in the living room, right there by the, the table, in the dining room. All, all white gumball machine with nothing but white gumballs in there. I remember that dream because I lived through it. I went through it. I have been through it. So I know exactly how it feels if I was with her right now. I know exactly how things would play out if I would have been with her. Maybe it would not have played out exactly the way my dream 
obviously predicted it or not predicted but showed me visually with those feelings those thoughts the eyes all that shit I remember I remember driving driving to her school to pick her up I picked her up in a nice red car. I don't even remember what car it was because I wasn't even into cars. I just know it was an all red top down car. Fast car, two door. Two door fast car, no top. I remember we were driving, driving in the hills. Her hair's just swinging in the air. I remember, I remember that shit. I remember the feeling of driving that car. I remember the feeling of pulling up into that beautiful driveway and that beautiful garden we had and that beautiful big house that I saw. I remember all those feelings. I remember all of it. And it's still with me to this day. Dreams are more lives. You say we humans might have one life, but we, we probably truly don't. We have multiple lives in our dreams. And if you know how to lucid dream, you will be able to control your own life, your own dream. I took control of my dream one time. It was long, it wasn't that long ago. It was like a year ago. I remember I woke up and I was just by myself. Like, I don't know where the fuck I was. I was in this room. It wasn't that dark. But it was like just like morning time, like early, early morning time. It had to be. No sun, no no moon, no nothing. So it was probably sunrise was barely coming. I'm looking everywhere. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I'm trying to I look at my phone, no time. I look I look for my watch, no time. I look for clocks and no time. That is one thing you know if you're in the dream world. There is no such thing as time. There's no clocks, there is no nothing. You might see numbers, but there is no time. And that's when I found out I knew I was in the dream. And I literally took control of that dream. I changed my surroundings with thoughts. I started building with my mind. I started feeling experiences that I never even been through in this life. I started flying because I knew where I was. I was in the dream. So I took control of it and I started flying. I went to the ocean and I swam in it. I went and I built me a house. And who knows, maybe it could have been that same house that I had four or five years ago when I was with one of my ex-girls in that dream and it was that beautiful white house who knows who knows who knows what that dream truly was who knows what dreams truly are who knows what reality really is don't get me wrong there is something I'm not saying I'm suicidal, but there are so many times in my life where I think like, what is death? What is it? Is it a portal to another universe? Is it a portal to another place? Is it just only darkness? But then I saw the other day, if God died on the cross, or wherever he will truly not leave anybody in darkness so therefore re reincarnation could be real but that's another thing so are aliens you think nobody's smart enough to be running these galaxies you don't think nobody is beyond time space energy and all these different environmental things that not one one thing person alien just surpassed it all I'm sure even God created the aliens 
Because if he created the universes, then he definitely created the aliens. There's a book called The Rule of One. And it is stated that everything is connected and we are all one. And I could truly say that is true because in the Avatar, the last airbender, Toph, she says that same thing. Everything is connected. Everything. The roots to the trees, to the water in your mouth. To the fishes in the pond, to the water in the sink. Everything is truly connected. Everything is one. We are one. All these different people, you might think you're different, you might think we're different, she might think we're different. We are all truly one. We all came from one being and from one certain entity that people just don't know. Nor I. Could be alien, could be God, it could be this, it could be that. It could be a seed. Who knows? But everybody is truly one. If you look at people and you believe everything is connected and everything is truly one, you will see yourself in them. You will generally see yourself in them. If we are all one and we everything is connected, you will generally see your face, your actions, your abilities in that whole random person you just saw on the street in you. You will see it. And it is fucking fascinating because as soon as I read something like that, I went outside and I looked at everybody. I looked at the trees. I touched the trees. I felt the trees. I looked at the grass. I smelt the grass. And we are all truly one. We are truly one. The mind, the body, to the fingers and the blood, we are all one. To your ex-girlfriend, to her new boyfriend, we are all one. And even if we are not one, we are all the same. Everything that bleeds, breathes. Everything that breathes, bleeds. Everything on land walks, everything in water swims. We are all the same. Some of them adapted to not having legs because they don't need legs. We do because we have to walk the earth. While the fishes and stuff, they get to glide through it. Just like a bird glides through the air. They glide through the ocean water. However, the birds did develop legs because they need to land. They can't glide forever. Fish, I don't know. Pretty sure they could just lay on the floor. Or who knows? I don't know. But that right there will truly change everything. The way your way of thinking. The way you talk to people. The way you see people. Everything. Everything you do in this world is connected. Everything you see is connected. Everybody you talk to is connected. Everything in this world is truly connected. And this is one thing that people forgot. This is every, this is something people just don't realize anymore. This is one thing that people just do not give a single shit about anymore, man. And it sucks, bro. It genuinely sucks. Because if we all just woke up from the matrix, from this constant assault on our conscience and brain and our thoughts and actions, if there was just one day where all of us just woke up or just realized we are all one thing, one big, huge, living thing, just like Mother Earth herself, Everything would change. The grass would be greener. The trees would go taller. The food will be more better. The apples will be more sweeter. The people will be nicer. More loving. More caring. 
You will feel more fulfilled. You will feel better. You will feel stronger. Yet, we forgot about these things. These are lost, 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 ancient things that we lost long time ago in time that generally we probably could never get back due to the assault on our minds every single day. The assault we go through from the government, the assault we go through from all these different places and things. And it's just, and it's just gone. It's just never, never to be found again. It's fucking nuts, bro. Because I truly believe that we are one. No. I truly believe we are all the same. We might have differences in looks, abilities, skills, or anything. But we truly are one thing. And that is humans. Or human. Or even Mother Earth. We're probably just all Mother Earth itself. Because we were the ones who were put on it. You know? And I and I hate it. I hate how we could all be so similar and so and so naive that everybody thinks we're different. Or that everybody is unique in their own way. Because we're really not. It's just one thing split into billions and millions. So of course we're going to have different things. Of course we're going to look different. Of course we're going to see different. Of course we're going to think different. Of course all these different things. But yet we truly forget where we really are from. And that is from one. We are one. That's why I look different than anybody else. That's why I talk different from anybody else. That's why I sound different from anybody else. That's why we all have our different strengths and weaknesses. Because the person who made us one or whatever made us one and split it into multiple. He had to make us different. So we would realize and understand that even though we are all one we still have our own differences our own strengths our own opinions and all these other things but there's just some people who are just totally lost totally lost and there's no coming back from it. you could sit there and say oh well what are you who are you talking about Jerron I don't know, LGBTQ community. And all these other dumbass fucking shit is going on in the world. Gay flag. The gay flag, are you serious? I'll burn that shit down myself. The gay flag. Okay, let me put up my own flag. Let me put up Jermaz's flag. What are they going to do? Tear it down? Right? Because I don't have millions of feminists yelling to keep it up or stupid ass arguments that make no fucking sense. Parents grooming their children into the wrong sex. It is abuse. It is neglect. You gotta realize, back then, when someone got, say, pregnant... There was no abortion. There was no cutting off dick. Making it into a pussy. There was no pussy making it into a dick. There was none of that. If you were born a man, you were a man. If you are born a girl, you are born a fucking girl. You gotta realize, God puts us 
as a man for a reason. He puts us as a woman for a reason. Or the greater being or the one. He doesn't just throw us in a, the wrong change of clothes into the fucking world. He don't do that shit. You generally think that God went through everything to put your life in order and all this shit and forgot to change what the fuck you were wearing? Putting all those little details about you, smart, this, that, all these attributes, strengths, and weaknesses, and you really think this man forgot to change what gender you were? If this world was different, I would generally beat the fuck out of every single man. Because obviously I can't women. Every single man who groomed their child into thinking they were the wrong sex. The wrong one. A six-year-old fucking kid has no fucking idea what sex he's going to be. Or... He knows he wants to be a girl or he wants to be a girl. And now the guy, are you fucking serious? A six-year-old? You're going to listen to a fucking six-year-old when you're 23, 20, 25, 30 plus, And you're over here listening to your six-year-old kid about, I want to be a fucking girl? Tell him to shut the fuck up, learn about the world a bit more, and then make his own fucking decision when he's 18. Not when he's six years fucking old. You're going to get his dick cut off, and then guess what? What's going to happen when he's 12, 13, seeing all these goddamn women? And his hormones start going crazy because that's what's in his fucking blood. What is he going to do? Grow the dick back? Oh, no. He can't. Sorry. We're not fucking starfish here. We don't grow our limbs back. So what is he going to do? He's going to have to put a strap on on or what he's going to do for the rest of his life. He's going to live in a fucking closet of shame knowing that he cut his dick off a long time ago because his parents just didn't want to say no. And now if he wants to get fucked, he has to find some dude who likes men girls and and obviously get fucked. That, that, that would be his pleasure. Because he can't grow his dick back. He will never experience the feeling of being a man because you wanted to listen to a fucking six-year-old kid who doesn't know shit about the world. Who doesn't know about the pains, the struggles, the happiness, the sadness. They don't know anything. Yet you want to listen to them. Like they got some reasonable sense. Are you serious? How do these fucking kids are getting fed by their schools that, oh yeah, maybe you're not the right age. Or, oh yeah, if you like guys and you're a guy, then maybe you're a fucking girl. Are you serious? You're telling me you can't look up to a guy with admiration and respect anymore? You can't look at somebody and be like, damn, I want to be strong like him. I want to be uh, fast like her. Or, I, 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 you can't look at somebody like that until, and, and then have somebody say into your fucking ear and drill into your ear. Oh, well, maybe you're supposed to be that instead. Since you like guys with big fucking muscles, maybe you should be a girl. Are you serious? It is fucking degeneracy, hypocriticism. It is like, it is so many things that are so bad in this world that people do. Literally, why do you think they want little boys turning into girls? Because young men start revolutions. Young men overthrow the government. Young men create the future of the society that is yet to come. Young men like me who are becoming a man will shape our future. Now they want nothing but little bitch ass pussies and little bitch ass girls to run the fucking world. Why? Why? So we can have no new inventions? More car accidents? More people on the planet? Do that.
be safe more feminism that doesn't give a fuck that the government doesn't give a fuck about divide and conquer you dumb fucks it is e one of the easiest arts of war divide and conquer Making little boys into fucking girls. Are you serious? You're lucky I don't go over there and beat the shit out of you. And your fucking kid. Since he thinks he's a grown ass fucking person. A grown ass man. To make his own decision to become a girl and cut his dick off. Are you serious? A 6 year old, 8 year old, 10, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17 year old kid. Even 18 year old fucking kid. Some 18 year old kids don't even know what the fuck they're doing with themselves. Some 20 year olds don't even know what the fuck they're doing with their damn self. 30 year olds even. Still no purpose in life, no drive in life, no nothing in life. Yet they have a decision to cut their cock off and get injected by hormones that are fucking not built for that? Biologically, scientifically, if you are a man, I believe you have XY. If you're a female, you have X or XX. Why don't we look at it like that? Why don't we look at it the way the world and society really is? Why don't we look at it like that anymore? Oh, wait. We don't because we have a government who does not give a shit about you or your families. That's why they're letting you have these dumb fucking clinics, these dumb ass parades about gay people and all this bullshit. So they could get money and they could make the clinics where you, where young men could chop their cock off. Because guess what? Now that they don't got a dick, they don't got a say. They're not a man anymore. They're a fucking woman. You must forget Women didn't get their rights till like, what, 10, 15 years later? Because why? Because women finally stood the fuck up and said something. Why didn't men get their rights first? Because they're the young fucking prospects, or should I say, the young slaves going to fucking war. Because there were so many young men that they could just discard and dispose every fucking front line even to this goddamn day and now they don't want no young men they want young girls because with no young men there will be no resistance no revolts no wars no nothing they won't have nobody in the front lines they'll have nobody and what will happen if all these fucking little bitch ass boys become little girls no roads, no construction, no electricians, no plumbers, no none of this shit. And you sit here and support the gays. Don't get me wrong. I have no problem with gay people. I don't. I genuinely don't. But if you're a gay mom or father. And your son tells you. Dad, I want to be a girl, cut my dick off. When they're at least less than the age of 20. And you accept that, you, sir, something is fucking wrong with you. Mentally, mentally, physically, and emotionally, something is fucking wrong with you. For listening to a fucking 12 year old fucking kid who doesn't know shit about life. Never had a job, never had real responsibility, never had no real bills, never had shit, never had a girlfriend, never had nothing. And you sit here and listen. Because you're a good father. If you're a good fucking father, you tell that little motherfucker, you could do it when you're 21 years old or when you're out the fuck my fucking house because I would never allow that shit. I don't care. My son could be gay. I don't care. But he will not get his dick cut off until he is either 21 years of age or that's it. That is it. And, or he's out the fuck of my house already because and a, a man of his own. Because therefore, if he's a man of his own, he is a man to make his own decisions and his own way of life. But a little fucking kid? No, that kid has so much potential to be whatever the fuck he wants. But since you want to listen to that little dumbass and cut his dick off, now you just 
fucking just boom you just cut that bar in half or should I say less than half because half of these women don't have good jobs half of these women in the real world don't have all this great stuff they need a fucking man who's willing to get down and dirty who's willing to go be a fucking plumber go touch shit all day who's gonna be an electrician and get fucking shocked every now and then and all these dangerous ass jobs that women don't want to do yet you the fucking government doesn't want to do nothing but produce those little pussies. Those little bitches who can't do it. Who physically and mentally can't. Don't get me wrong. There's women who can build the street. Who can build houses. They can do this. Who can do that. But tell me how many fucking women are there out there. Tell me. Tell me. What is it? Less than 20%? Probably. Most likely. Out of all the rich people in the world, probably 75% is men. Honestly. Why? Because that's what men were desired. That's what they were meant for. They were, des they were designed to conquer. They were designed to fucking be strong. They were designed to go to war. The men right now who could grow beards like me and mustaches, it shows in our ancestry, our an ancestry, yeah. It shows that our family and clan were warriors. The men who can't grow a beard, who can't grow a mustache, or who have no hair on them, they didn't come from war. They came from good times. And... All this bullshit. Genetically, if you are able to grow a beard somewhere in your family, you and your ancestors were at fucking war, fighting to the death, man to man combat, fucking a hundred on a hundred, one to one, and you were fighting for your lives, for your bloodline, for your clan, for your people, for your family, for your friends. Now all that shit's out the window. Everything. Now, if you want to be a girl, cut your dick off and you can be a girl. Or if you want to be a girl, let's get a shot and inject some weird-ass hormones in you. Make you look and think like a fucking girl. Are you fucking serious? That is crazy. That is fucking crazy. And I really wish someone had a problem with what I'm saying or how I feel or anything like that. I really wish... Because I know damn well what the government will do. They'll throw me in jail and lock me up forever. And what? And what? And what? And what? And what? I will sit there. Unwielding. Unwavering. Strong-wielded. Strong in the mind. And I will sit there and take my time. For trying to improve my life and young people, young men, young women who watch me and want to become better. I will sit there and go through any type of pain. So families, kids, brothers and sisters can fully realize their potential to become whatever they truly believe. As long as they are dedicated, consistent, hardworking. And obviously unwavering to what the fuck they want to do and what they want to be. All these little bitch ass pussies don't have none of that. They don't. They're not with it. They're not. They're not like that. They're not built like that. They don't. They, it's just not it. It's just not like that. It's just not like that. And I'm sorry if I offended you. I'm sorry if you don't like what I'm saying. I'm sorry if... If, yeah, I offended you. But generally, this is not right. Turning little boys into fucking girls ain't right. Little fucking boys. Oh, well, he's eight years old. I, he's in second grade. I thought, second grade? Second grade. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Oh, well, he's in high school, so he's already becoming a man. Shut the fuck up up straight up you do not want the best for your kid 
nor do you want the best for your future. Because little kids do not deserve their fucking future to be thrown out the window when they are born. Little kids are supposed to be born with nothing but pure happiness and pure just themselves. It's all a really kid is. You don't know anything, so you be yourself. You do what you want. You laugh all the time. You're always happy. Right? That's what little kids do. Let them grow up. Let them know pain. Let them know suffering. Let them know the true realities of this harsh world so they can truly become who they need to be or who they want to be. Because if you sit here and you play with the future of our country and generations on to come, then what are you doing? You're fucking yourself. You think this is going to you, government, United States government. You think having all these little kids turn into girls is going to help you? Why? Because what? Us young men won't have a revolt against you? Well, let me tell you something, buddy. You are fucking retarded. No matter how many specialists you have on your team, no matter how many agents you have, you are fucking retarded. Because there is no way in hell or in heaven at that either that your little dumb fucking plan will work turning all these little bitch-ass boys into men. Because guess what? When your family starts doing it or when... There's not enough men to road the pavement or all this bullshit. Who's going to do it? You are, bitch. You and your little dumbass sons and daughters. Even if you have all the money in the world, you're going to be doing the back-breaking slave work, you fucking bozo. And whose fault is it? Yours. And guess what? You think your country's going to stay together when nothing but little bitches are running it? Are you serious? You think little girls are going to run your country as good as you run it now? I don't know. If you really look at all the presidents of the United States, what were they? They were men. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God, Jeremiah. You're such a feminist. Oh, my God. Cancel me. Oh, my God. Bitch, shut up. You are literally canceling your own subscription on the U.S. government. You, U.S. government, you said, oh, Shit, it's that time of the month that I need to pay the bill. Oh shit. You know what? Nah, fuck that. Women gonna make little bit little boys into girls, I right, bet. So we could have control forever. You fucking bozo. That's one thing. If <sighs> let me tell you, bro. I tell you one thing over me before I end this stream. If a nation or a government crumbles to an enemy falls to an enemy it will always be rebuilt back up but if a if a nation or country crumbles from within it will never come back and i hope all those people all the brains all the knowledge all the technology all the guns all the weapons all the ammo you fucking have you will actually be learning something you might think all your little manifestation manifest or manifestation shit's gonna work about the u.s government living forever look at the other side of the world bud all these motherfuckers are going against you you think you're gonna be somebody press that nuke button because guess what if we die we all gonna die you don't realize who's really in control of this earth and it's not you Oh, what, you made contact with aliens? You don't think they see your fuck-ups and flaws? They're probably just playing along. See how fucking retarded you are. Until you bomb Mother Earth, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to extinct your stupid ass. Because you want to destroy Earth. A planet. You wanted to destroy and demolish a whole thing, a, a society. A nation, lives, souls for your own good. That is crazy. If nobody's gonna fuck the government up, United States, it's gonna be the aliens. 
And if not, I will reincarnate as an alien and I will personally come shoot the shit out of Mother Earth for the young men and women of this country and all around the world that want to become the best version of them. But you governments are holding everybody back. And that is it. That's all I have to say. But it's fine, bro. Like, generally, thank you, stream. Should have been a Jeremiah Talks, but it's whatever. It was a Genshin time. We did some Genshin on the side, so it's fun. But I generally wish my viewers the best and only the best. I hope you become who you want to become. I want you to do what you want to do. However, be responsible. Act with diligence, be respectful, and be dependable. And never go back on your word. Never. Because that right there shows you're not responsible for anything. But nonetheless, I love y'all, bro. Be safe. Have a good day, good night, good morning, wherever you are, wherever you're from. And that is it. That's all I have to say. Stream tomorrow, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But in the future, when someone does find this, I'll just say, I told you so.